As I read Revelations chapter 12, Revelations 12, verses 10. For the one, Revelations chapter 12, verses 10. For the one who stood before our God and accused our brothers and sisters day and night has been thrown out of heaven. Our sisters and brothers won the victory over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the truth which they proclaimed. They were willing to give up their lives and tithe. Now, this is, this, is, this is the word of God. And what we learn here is that the enemy accuses and would keep on accusing you, attacking you, devouring you, ripping you, tearing you down. East, west, north, south. And if you are not strong enough and you are not aware of, and we are not aware of the effect and the source and the repercussions of these accusations, are sure enough they can bring us down because they depress, they oppress, they cripple. They, you question and you start even undermining who you are. And so we can see from our Revelations chapter 12, the enemy would accuse the brothers, the sisters, the Christians before God day and night. But they were able to overcome, they were able to succeed, and they won the victory by the blood of Jesus. And so it is important we learn the importance of the blood of Jesus. And also the Bible continued and said that they were victorious by proclaiming, by speaking, it's good to speak, to announce, and to rebuke and to reject any false accusations. And God says in ten, one of the Ten Commandments, do not accuse your brother, your sister, falsely. Why? God is God. What happens when you are accused falsely? And when the accusations now, they become so frequent, so dom dominant, and so, so common that whenever somebody sees you, there's a sauce, there's a pot brewing, boiling, cooking with accusations, east and west. They cannot or he cannot or she cannot see you without looking, pointing and uh, blaming you falsely for things which you have not done. And so I say, once again, accusations, they are very destructive. And the enemy uses them to accuse us. And if you are not careful, and if you are not aware of the power, of the effect, the negative, the destructive side of accusations, then it can, they can really bring you down and eventually uh, devour and cripple who you are. God does not like, God does not delight in false accusations. Now, who is Jesus? Was Jesus accused? Yes, Jesus was highly accused. And Jesus faces a lot of accusation. What were the accusations labeled against him? Statement. Or he was where somebody uses wrong false words to blame you for something which you have not done. Welcome. What were these reasons that made Jesus be accused? East, west, north, and south. Welcome. I'll pick a few examples in the Bible where we see Jesus are hotly being accused. And the, accus and the accusers of Jesus, they eventually ensured that he was actually put to death. One of the accusations that after, soon after Jesus began his mission is when he went to Nazareth. Nazareth was his hometown. Hey, Nazareth. <laughs> Nazareth, yes. This was his hometown. And we see in Nazareth, uh, it was a town that was built on a hilltop. And Jesus goes there and he, he goes into a synagogue. It was a tradition. And it was a habit as you read the book of, as you read the Gospels, you realize Jesus often visited the synagogue. That was a sanctuary. That was, a synagogue was a sanctuary, a house of God, was an altar. And an altar is a very important part of our lives. 
And Jesus was never far away from the synagogues or places of worship because synagogues were places of worship of the Israelites, of the Jews after their temple had been destroyed. And so as Jesus began his mission, he goes to Nazareth, he goes to Nazareth, <laughs> hey, he goes to Nazareth and he took uh, he took, we are told, he took um, a scroll, a scroll that this is where they were reading from. And he read from the book of Isaiah. And as he read, he says, all that which you have heard, that I am, go I am the chosen one, I am the anointed one. And this is uh, uh, Luke chapter, chapter 4, Luke chapter 4 from verse 16. And after he, he read, that he was the anointed one, the chosen one, and that he had been given power by God to come and free the captives, the blind, to give them freedom, and to make the, the blind see, to give liberty to the oppressed, and to, to speak and to speak the good news and to spread the word of God. And he said after this one that he was the chosen one. We are told he sat down and everybody was amazed. They marveled and they were all amazed. And they were highly impressed by the, by, the, by, the, by the reading of Jesus. Because after Jesus read, he sat down and he told them, all that you have heard has come to fulfillment today. In other words, Jesus, after he had read, he said that which he had read had come to fulfillment through him. And therefore, he was the anointed one. And then he goes on and he talks and he expounds further. And he says how the Israelites and the people of Nazareth had rejected the prophets of God. Why? They had even gone and they were accusing and killing the prophets of God. And he picks an example of Elijah. That why was Elijah sent to a far off country, to the widow of Zarephath? Why was he sent uh, to this widow? Were there no widows in Israel? They were there. But why was he sent to a Gentile? Because they had, they were, there was no one who was righteous. They were killing, they were attacking, they were persecuting the prophets of God. And during the Elijah's time, it's true, because Elijah even has to run away from Jezebel because he was almost he was almost the only surviving a prophet of God because all the prophets of God they were under accusation persecution and Jezebel had destroyed almost all of them and so when Jesus comes he looks back and he uh, reminds them a prophet is never accepted in his hometown i am here you rejected, you persecuted, and you killed even the prophets of God. Why did God even go and heal a Syrian, a Gentile, who was far off? Were there no people who had leprosy in Israel? But because you lacked faith, you did not have enough faith, like the Gentile. No man went, and he just bathed, and he was cured. But because of your hard-heartedness, your hard hearts, you cannot accept a prophet. You are so sinful. You have no faith. You reject the prophets of God and you kill them. And when Jesus now raised this issue, the people of Nazareth, they accused him and they turned against him. And they said, is this not the son of Joseph? Is this not the son of Mary? Is this not the son of the carpenter? Hey, and they looked for a way and they dragged Jesus and they took him uh, to a cliff on top of the hill. And they, their intention was to throw him down the hill and to destroy him and to kill him. But the Bible says, and Jesus slipped through. And Jesus slipped through. And he went. And they were not able to capture him. You will slip through. You will escape. You will mingle and move and slide away. And whoever accuses you, the Lord God will protect you and shield you. And they will not capture you. 
That is one episode. So they accused Jesus that he was, was not truthful, that he was condemning them. But then the truth is, during Elijah's time, Elijah survived and he was the only surviving prophet of God because even Elijah comes under immense and hot accusation by Ahab and Jezebel. Now,